The design of my TK classroom at my site is uh, we had to take into consideration a lot of floor space. We don't need desks in there. We need place the, places for kids to move and to have space to, to, for music and dance and things like that, but, and also centers designed so that the young mind can really um, engage and not just be like told what to do, but really to explore. You know, with the teacher, she's kind of come in and said, I have these great ideas, and I've just been there saying, go for it. This sounds great, you know, just continue to make it so that kids love to come to school. I usually give everyone an acronym um, to let them know the four criteria for developmentally appropriate practices, and that is acronym of CASH. So C, the kids need to have choices. They need to have authentic choices within that environment. A, they need to be active physically and um, cognitively. So you need to expect that a child's going to be active, not sitting quietly. They're going to have to be actively participating in their environment. And then S, it should be done in small groups or individualized so that the children receive the attention they deserve. And then H is the hands-on active learning criteria. We know that kids learn best when they can make a connection with the learning environment and with the concept, and it can't be something that's abstract. Honestly, I really feel that a TK environment becomes successful um, when you feel that the children are engaged in wonderful conversations, when they have interactions and you feel like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, a successful classroom really includes a teacher who knows what she's doing and has a professional background and is able to bring out the best in each child. Each of my centers are appropriately set up. The small groups are appropriately set up according to their abilities. I have to, as a teacher, kind of know each child and place them accordingly. Um, I have a direct group instruction, you know, I, I break off on and off a uh, whole group and break off into small groups. I do have daily centers, which are four centers set up in rotations form. Fifteen minutes per rotation, they, ha they hear the bell, they go to the next group. Um, they're usually very, very fun, engaging activities that are done. When you come into a TK classroom, it's going to be noisy, it's going to be loud, they're going to be everywhere exploring, and that is the way that they're able to learn best. Children who are in this level, in this age, they really need that time to discover, to have those hands-on experiences, to socialize with one another, to build those important skills. And I feel like it is extremely necessary to have those types of learning environments that incorporate play, that incorporate nature, that incorporate these discovery-based learning methods. I give them 45 minutes of, I call it free time. Um, and I, I love calling it free time because we don't, as adults, we don't get that free time. The kids actually learn so much from that free time, as you saw through little Carter and little Matthew and little Naomi showing off their wonderful activities or whatever they had done, Legos or whatever they wanted to share. In the end, it's all opportunities for the child to explore. Free time is a time for them just to be them, to love learning, to just love the fact that they're in class having fun.